I'm trying to find a good... Uh, a good question? I've seen the same one come up twice. Hit me with it. <laughs> not not, <laughs> not asking. PG? Not asking, but I've seen it come up twice. Ask it. Ask it. Ask it. Ask it. Can't. Can't. I, I can't ask that one. I'll yeah. ask it. I'm not, I'm not shy. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Does it have to do with the butt? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> This is a kick-ass love story with Paige Van Zant and Austin Vanderford. Paige Vanderford. Paige Vanderford. Yeah. And obviously, a kick-ass love story. We jumped on the podcast train, and really, I mean, we've been trying to do a reality show around our lives for years. We started that process on YouTube. The reality series style wasn't necessarily our thing. I think. Yeah, we dabbled in it, the vlogging and. And all that, but it's kind of hard, like, you know, having someone follow us around all the time. And then we tried doing it ourselves, but it was more. But of, what happened? It was more just you filming me, and yeah, I, I didn't reciprocate. As you didn't reciprocate well. the filming, so it was basically yeah. just me filming your life <laughs> yeah. and then editing it myself and putting it on YouTube. But I loved the content, honestly, because I get a bunch of footage of you. Yeah, and it was fun. I mean, we we planned stuff out, and you know, a lot of it was like fight week stuff, or you know, and and uh, I'm just not as good as getting like the the good stuff the good for you. Stuff to film. Yeah, but it's, that's okay. We're here now. We're doing the podcast, and I do our YouTube channel does have a ton of really awesome content that I'll keep forever. It has us in Alaska, which is always really special. Yeah, we'll probably try to keep doing it again, or kick that back up i think it's if anything footage for our kids yeah yeah for sure so i mean yeah you might see us back in doing <laughs> in it again, the but, but for now we're doing this podcast <laughs> yes so. and i wanted to start it off uh for people who don't know who we are um or if they do know who we are it's the story of us right it's called the kick-ass love story i want to continue the name that i feel like it really fits who we are as people we have a pretty kick-ass love story yeah we've been married we just celebrated our five-year wedding anniversary yeah congratulations to us congratulations yeah. <laughs> um so honey tell the world how did we meet man well we i mean we officially met uh at strength and conditioning uh living in portland portland, portland oregon. oregon yeah yes fittingly and i've got the blazers jersey on woo! today so through a little throwback i was actually a junior blazer dancer yeah okay. i danced for the blazers for 13 of the home games when i was just a wee baby oh crazy yeah yeah little so factoid. but Actually, I want to you, because I feel like you're also not very good at bragging about yourself. Yeah. A lot of people know us. Yeah, yeah They yeah. know, there's a little bit more backstory out there about me, but I want people to know, like, your story, too. Obviously, why I fell in love with you, why the moment I let, met you, I knew you were going to be successful and just like a superstar. <laughs> so, brag about yourself for a little bit. Obviously, you ended up, you're from Alaska. Yeah. Ended up in Oregon. Yeah. Why? Small, uh, a small, small school in Oregon, Southern Oregon University. Um, they had a really small, like NAI school, and they had kind of a an Alaska pipeline for wrestling, and and uh, I wasn't really convinced I wanted to wrestle in, in college. I I actually had considered like trying to play like junior college basketball and stuff, but uh. You know, fast forward, went to to school, wrestled, uh, won a national championship, all American, <laughs> couple of times. Okay, and, and mind you, you're from Nanilchik, Alaska, which yeah. your graduating class was how many kids? Uh, it was 16, I believe. 16 or 18. No and bus. how many kids were on your wrestling team? I was pretty much the only one. My senior year, I was the only one. So my... Uh, my main training partner was uh, John Lindemann. I, I believe he was 65 at the time, but uh, a stud wrestler, like an alternate for the Olympic team uh, one year and all that. So Yeah, I feel like that's like one of those stories you see in a documentary series where we're going to go back and 
film you growing up in Nanilchik and owning the bar that your you know your parents owned <laughs> yeah. and getting drunk and fighting people when you were a kid all the stories that your family <laughs> yeah. has told me and then somehow you end up marrying you well no that's not what I was <laughs> gonna say that's not your life accomplishment no. I mean it's great yeah. but going on winning a championship I think there's just so much cool things in your future but seeing where you came from especially growing up in Nanilchik going to where'd you go to uh, Southern Oregon University. Yeah. Getting your national championship. And that's where you met me. Yeah. And so <laughs> then we go to you, that chapter of my yes. life. And, and uh, I had already started fighting. In fact, I had my first pro fight, which you and I didn't know each other, but no. so you were back, at my first I fight. I was. Backstory on how I ended up back in Oregon. So I was born and raised in Oregon. Um, love it. It'll always have a piece of my heart. Uh, I n- left Oregon when I was gosh 15 my yeah. family moved out I ended up you know we'll condense the story I ended up going uh training at uh team alpha male yeah. for a long time decided it was time for me to move on and just continue my journey elsewhere I wanted to go back home for a little bit ended up back in Oregon and uh gosh a big driving force of me moving to Oregon was actually Chael Sonnen which I, we have a great story about him coming oh, up. Yeah. so yeah uh Chael was the one we had the same manager at the time and he was like yeah well, you know what? we got a really good team out here Ed Herman's out here we have some really good coaches I think if you're looking to move back to Oregon we have a team for you yeah so I was like awesome let's like, give it a try moved back um bought my first house which was really exciting actually yeah. I had just come off dancing with the stars and uh chael was it chael somebody was putting on a local show in washington uh wasn't yeah it wasn't chael with because i fought on yeah it. i okay. remember <laughs> it, it was uh yeah it was like a local promotion mm-hmm. and and uh in the pacific northwest uh kind of hard to find like pro fights it's easier now but at the time it was like the main like pro show that was in the pacific northwest so. yeah so they brought me out and had me do a meet and greet like you could you could meet me in jail basically yeah. we had our own little private table and for a short period you could come over and take pictures with me and um do you want to tell the story or do you want me to oh gosh <laughs> Yeah, you got to tell you this one. Okay. Yeah, you so I didn't this find one. this out until later, but obviously I'm taking pictures. People are standing in line. It was super cool because there's not a lot of females who come and take pictures with me. Yeah. Normally it's just dudes. Yeah. We're at fights, right? So two girls come, take pictures with them. I find out that um, one of the girl's boyfriends is on the card and then it's also the, the girl's brother. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> oh, I take gosh. a picture. <laughs> Who did I take a picture with? <sighs> my ex-girlfriend and my sister. <laughs> yes. I took a picture with your ex-girlfriend uh, and your sister. And I asked you for that picture so we could plug it for the podcast. But um, but I didn't get it, did I? Did you not? Oh, I didn't. I asked you for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I Gosh. That I think be... it's probably on my sister's, sister's... Uh, Facebook okay. profile. Well, yeah. But could be a little weird but yeah, anyways, yeah, yeah. Long, so the funniest part about this is i didn't find this out until way later i don't know when you ended up telling me but i believe then your friend jake siegel uh, uh what did he do he uh he told oh man i feel like, yeah he had told uh my ex-girlfriend who at the time you know wonderful lady i've never obviously never met yeah, her I've only yeah. heard good things so that's yeah. why i think it's just not compatible yeah but i think a, it's fine a, a, anyways he told her like hey careful Patreon's aunt might steal your boyfriend or and and two weeks later you moved into my house uh, yeah i mean we were we were on the outs anyways so i don't want to seem like a complete scumbag but no uh, yeah. So, anyways, you <laughs> ipso facto, so you were at my first fight, my yes, first pro fight. I was like, I have been to every single one of your pro fights. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Just by chance. Yeah. And I didn't know you. Had never met you before. Yeah. You weren't even my teammate yet. No, we weren't even no, teammates. No. So I didn't even meet you at that fight. We didn't end up meeting until what months later. Yeah. Uh, because and- I left. I went to Belize. I took a vacation. Yeah. Uh, came back. And that's when we started training together. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because I, you know, after that, well, after that fight and stuff, I was like, okay, you know, I need to make a movement for the same reasons, you know, moving to Portland for you. I was like, I need to go up, 
get uh, better training partners and, and kind of, you know, take that next step. So then I moved up to Portland and, and before I even moved, I was commuting back and forth, which it was like a five hour drive. And I would, I would go spend like three days in Portland, sleep on my buddy's couch. Yeah. And then I'd go back home. I'd work. I was a personal trainer. So I'd like grind, try to uh, work a bunch and then go back and, you know, constantly doing that. And, and go back uh, and forth. And I will say after, so you walked into, we called it the Hill. It was where we trained for conditioning and yeah. in, uh, gosh, not Happy Valley, Oregon and Westland. Westland. Yeah. Uh, so you walk into the Hill. I had already been there and I saw you instantly fell in love and i had just gotten off hot. you were hot <laughs> <laughs> i just got off the phone with my mom yeah. telling her don't worry mom like obviously uh anyways i'm not gonna oof, oof. anyway so i was like mom don't worry there is nobody attractive at my gym i'm not gonna go date one of my teammates this is gonna be a really good change for me and then you walk in and then <laughs> i think somehow we had a picture together somewhere maybe coach dave took it yeah and my mom's like who's the guy <laughs> she like knew it instantly that i was gonna fall in love with you uh she started stalking your instagram long before i did and then i of course started stalking your instagram yeah and yeah. but we did have a lot of people initiating us being together obviously i was super into you yeah um, i mean obviously obviously i think you were into me i, I hope i, <laughs> I hope was I didn't just but steal you. He, here's the hard thing is like you know, you have to imagine I am from such a small town. Like, you know, I'm telling my mom, yo, mom, you know, and she already knows like Paging Zing it chains at this gym. And, Cause my mom was a my mom knew way about you before I ever did. Like, you know, she my mom was a big fan of Dancing with the Stars. So cool. she watched like every episode and and uh was a big fan of you would try to get me to watch the show like you gotta watch it there's this really cute mma girl i'm like yo mom i'm not gonna watch dancing <laughs> with the stars it's okay i had never seen an episode before i was on the show yeah so it's fine yeah and you know so in my mind like you know i'm, I'm telling my mom like mom like i'm ch you know paging dance at this gym and and gosh i like have people tell me they think she kind of likes me and so I'm, so funny it sounds like such a kid thing but you know, I'm like, there's no way, <laughs> like no way Paige and Zia is into me. And, and, uh, so yeah, it was like, I was you into you hardcore. Uh, yeah. I mean, it probably, yeah, it, it, it was just too unbelievable for me. And so, you know, my mom even told me, my mom was like, be careful, Austin. Don't let her break your heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, and then, yeah. and then one thing led to another and. And we we're making out. And we were making out, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah then we were making out. <laughs> okay, no, though. No, seriously, though, we met at the gym. It was pretty quickly that yeah. we, like you said, you were driving back and forth. You had like a five-hour drive to get to practice every day. Yeah. We had started seeing each other. Mm -hmm. And you were like, you know, you did the whole guilt trip. I, <laughs> <laughs> You totally guilt tripped me. You're like, you kinda. know, I knew what I was doing. Yeah, I, I kind of need to get a job and I got to get my own place. I'll have to see you less. So, um, just, you know, I'm going to need to get my own apartment so I don't have to drive back and forth. And I had just bought my first house. I was like, Hey, you know, I have an extra bedroom. Do you want to, you want to move in with me? And what happened? <laughs> okay. Backtrack a little bit because okay. it wasn't quite like it that. Was, it was we, like that. We were, we were going, we were going paddle boarding. And, uh, and you had said something like, yeah, you know, if, if you ever need a place to, uh, stay oh, when yeah. you come up here, I, you know, I got an extra bedroom and all that. I never once slept in the extra no, you, bedroom. No, you did not. <laughs> you did not sleep in the extra yeah. bedroom. You slept in my bedroom. But I did, I guilt, I did guilt trip you. And, and, uh, by the time I moved to Portland full time, I moved right into your you house. You moved straight into my house. We'd been dating for like two weeks. Yeah. But we are skipping two very, very cool stories. Ooh, okay. Before that. Yeah. First one. Tell me. The first what, one? Yeah, what's the first one? Okay. Well, oh gosh, there's so many. So we have to talk about the first sleepover we ever had. Oh, yes. Okay. This is before you moved in. This was before. There was I a moved lot in. happened in the two weeks after yeah. we started seeing each other. Yeah, this was so. So, so we're the talking. first. So the first sleepover. Go first ahead. First sleepover. Yeah. So you had been driving back and forth. Yeah. This was the first time I was like, hey, you know, you could 
stay at my house and we're like seeing each other so of course it's our first adult sleepover one would (laughs) expect adult things to happen i had something light i ate soup for dinner (laughs) yes so we're leaving practice i had recently got a new harley yes this all applies this is the first this is why we'll always know the first night we made love (laughs) so anyways i just had gotten a new harley we're leaving practice my the roads in Portland are terrible. So trying to get out of the parking lot, my Harley got stuck in like a huge pothole of sand. Yeah. And the whole thing tipped over and the my dropped my Harley on my foot and it the peg crushed my foot completely. Yeah. And this is there's so much to this story. Okay. So peg crushes my foot. I'm luckily wearing riding boots. Yeah. Um Tyree comes over, picks my bike up for me. I'm like, "Okay, I'm fine." At that moment, I was like, "Okay, I broke my foot." But I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I I have a broken foot. I'm not messing up my first sleepover with this man. <laughs> I was so excited to have a sleepover with you. And I was like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to be fine. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I tell everyone I'm fine. I get my Harley. I ride home. The whole way home, I could feel my boot filling with blood. Yeah. At that moment, I knew it wasn't just broken. I knew that I had broke the skin somehow. Yeah. And my boot filled with blood the whole way home. We get to the house, we go down to the basement, you get on the couch. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go upstairs. I unzip my boot in the bathroom and the peg had gone through my foot. Yeah. And there's blood everywhere. Yeah, there's, I remember you tracking it like all I over. tracked blood throughout the whole house. I'm like so embarrassed because you're supposed to just have be having a sleepover. <laughs> I'm sure you're super horny at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i'm like well gotta go to the hospital like my foot is completely gaping open and we have a picture if we want to plug this yeah yeah. um it's disgusting so warning uh but we also have the funniest video you end up taking me to the hospital yeah we are in the hospital because you know how hospitals are in the emergency room we're there for probably I can't even tell you. Oh, I, mean, I bet we probably got there at like 7 p.m., 8 p.m. And yep. we didn't leave until like 4 a.m. Yeah, it was 4 a.m. I think we have a video we're filming. I'm like, hey, coach, we're not going to make it into practice. I hurt my foot. Austin's not going to make it to practice either. So we're filming the whole thing. And then we like end the thing. I, they stitch my foot up. Nothing's broken. I had to have a ton of stitches. Yeah. Uh, take me home. And then what happened? <laughs> Yeah, well, we went home at like four, four or five in the morning. Four or five in the morning, and uh, I don't know if I can say this because you were, you were on narcotics for the barely. Pain, but yeah, but we did make love. We did that make same love. <laughs> so we will always know the day we consummated our love for each other for the first time was the night I dropped my Harley on my foot. Yeah, bad foot and all. Bad foot and all. I yeah. was wrapped up reverse cowgirl with with a bandage on oh geez yeah yeah so so that was the first love making so that's the first time we made love yeah that was important piece of information so obviously it was went well because you moved in with me yeah so you're fine with and we're married six years later we were married and yes so it was it was a positive experience i would say yeah um gosh fast forward you're living with me, meeting my parents. This is bringing us back to the Chael story. And yeah. obviously Chael Sonnen, legend. Yeah. One of our dearest friends. I've actually known him. Oh my I've gosh. Known him for like, a long time. Yeah. I've known him for over 10 years. Yeah. Maybe more. And you as well. Yeah. Uh, not personally, but I, I went to, I went to his, I was at his fight when he fought Anderson the first time. And we all thought he was going to win the fight. We were, you know, rooting for Chael and, yeah. and uh, being wrestlers and stuff. And But everyone knows what happened there. And it was crazy. But, but legendary story. You moved to Oregon. Chael sends our teammate. Yeah. So you we start dating. This is, I mean, this is your story to tell. Yeah. Well, Chael and I are training quite a bit at this point. And I think, you know, he still had a few fights left and, and all that. So... You know, I know what we're we're at practice. I know after practice, I'm meeting your parents for the first time. And uh, mind you, meeting 
your parents after I have moved into the house, into her house after two weeks of dating. We're and, sleeping together, obviously. Yeah. You're living in my bedroom. I was freshly out of a relationship, jumping right back into it. Which a new my one. mom knew about. Exactly. So. so for me, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I have no idea, like, your parents or, you know, I, I didn't even know what your parents looked like. And, and, uh, so I'm nervous and I'm telling Chael this. I'm like, damn it, Chael. I'm meeting Paige's parents today. Like, and we're going to Top Golf. That yeah. Was like, yeah. We were going, we're to, going top to Top Golf. golf. Yeah. And Chael, you know, Chael, uh, he and I would mess around with each other a lot, talk a lot of shit, you know. Yes. Be, be you guys funny have a and, very weird relationship. Yeah. He would, uh, you know, say things under our breath while we're grappling. Anyways, the whole practice is like, man. You know, I I know the feeling. You just got to be so nervous right now, right? You're meeting her parent, and I'm like, nah, I'm not nervous. And and but then he's like going on. He's like bringing up all these things. I'm like, fuck, maybe I am a little nervous. And you know, then we we get to the part where okay, we're going on this date. Who pays for this date? And, and no exaggeration, I must have had like fifteen dollars in my <laughs> bank account, like. You know, I'm a one and oh, two and oh, or I was two and oh, two and oh professional making like $500 a fight, Mm -hmm. trying to juggle that in like personal training just to make a little bit of money and, and stuff. And so Cheryl's picking on you and saying like, are you going to pay? Yeah. Which, you know, I'm like, I don't have any money to pay with. And then he's like, what, are you going to have her dad pay so he can be the man? Or are you going to pay? Cause you got to look good and you have to pay. Yeah. But then, but then like really fucking with me and saying, yeah, but you know, if you pay, is the dad going to be, feel disrespected because all this stuff. So So, she was just planting this like anxiety in your head, which you're already an anxiety ridden person. Yeah. So I already, yeah. Um, so, you know, we're practice is over and, and we're showering up and, and, uh, I'm just like, gosh, dang it, you know, so stress out because then we're going home. I'm also a sweater, too, so I'm just sweating like crazy. And and so we're getting ready to go home. And and uh, actually, we're already we're already in the car and, and uh, I get a text and it's from Chael. And, you know, it kind of plays on a little more like, you know, you got to make this decision soon. What are you going to do? And, you know, just to make me squirm a little yeah. bit and. And then he shoots me another text. And he's like, hey, when you get home, make sure you check the side pocket of your gym bag. And I'm like, oh, boy, I'm sure he, like, is going even further. Further like, with it. <laughs> yeah, or maybe, or maybe he's thinking, like, maybe he's like, I, you know, I put a condom in this. <laughs> like, <laughs> something like that, you know. And uh, You didn't know what he was going to put in the gym I bag. I had no idea, but I got home. I checked the side pocket, and he had put, like, 500 bucks in there and and was like hey you know you pay for the first date and and all this that makes me want to cry i know just a really sweet you know a sweet thing of him to do and that's like and incredible uh, yeah for all the things people say about chael obviously he is the gangster from westland yeah yeah. but incredible human he it is and it's kind of like you know he is this just witty, smart, funny, mm-hmm. and and uh, all this, but he does have a big heart. Big so, heart, yeah, yeah. I could go on and like trail stories that are just incredible. Oh, so gosh. when I was training, of course, we have the funny ones. But yeah. when I was training, this is before I was in Oregon training at American. Uh, oh no, I had just left Team Alpha Male, and no, not to get any drama because there isn't any. Um, you know, people are talking shit. There's everyone has their shit to say, whatever. And I was y- super young still. I was like 22 at the time. Yeah. And I didn't know how to handle all this. It was, you know, brand new to me. So Chael would text like our manager or text me and just say like, hey, you need help? Like, what do you need? Anybody says something bad about you, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. Yeah. And yeah. just like basically just reassured me if anyone said anything negative about me, he would handle it. Yeah. And like in a way that nobody is going to argue with Chael. Yeah. Nobody can nobody can beat him when it comes to talking shit. It's tough. So, long story short, any bad experience I've ever gone through, he's been there. Yeah. He's a cool cool person and he paid for our first date. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't pay for the first date, Chael did. Chael did. <laughs> yeah. So the first date was on Chael. <laughs> first one was on Chael. So, what do we think? Did my dad does my dad like you? Did he like you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so too. I think the first one went well. You did yeah. out golf all of us. Yeah, I mean, 
Come on. <laughs> yeah. And I think the real question is, aren't you supposed to let the the dad win on the first date? No. Never. Never. Yeah, nobody. I don't think he would respect you anyways yeah. if you let him if you let him win. Yeah. yeah. It's not like I'm some great golfer either. I'm just yeah. super competitive. And I've played some golf. Yeah, and he was a wrestler too, so yeah. he's a competitive but competitive guy. Yeah. So, so we we make first love. Date. We have our first date. Super had awesome sex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> still do. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Uh, we're living together. My parents met you. Uh, do I get to the next part? Yeah, you go to the next. I got it. Yeah. So, so something happens. I don't even know what got us to this point. I think we probably were having like our first fight or yeah. first like situation where we we're uh, like tiffing, and I was very sure about our relationship. Yeah. Pretty much, oh, I mean, not pretty much, for the, the entire time. I was very sure I wanted to marry you. I knew you were the one. But of course, being a female in the position that I was in, it was always a question of what your motives were. Yeah. Of course, you have that in the back of your head. So at one moment, I think I sat you down. We were in our hot tub, actually. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> I remember this. This is a serious, serious, not fight conversation where I got you in the hot tub. I was like, all right, we got to have a talk. Like, this was our first serious talk. And I was yeah. like, um... Obviously, I love you, but if you're going to live in my house, if you're going to be here and we're going to be together, then you're going to marry me. Yeah. And you're going to propose and we're going to be together forever because I'm not fucking around. I am not dating you again. I'm not going to have you just leave. If we're together, you're going to marry me. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, it wasn't like, yo, you're marrying me or else. It was like, hey, this is really going somewhere or yeah, like... Yeah. You know, we're not going to play around. I'm not going to... I think it's funnier, though, when I say marry, <laughs> marry me or die. Yeah, I just didn't want you... I didn't want anyone to think you... That yeah. you're being held hostage yeah. right now. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Blink twice if you... Yeah. <laughs> Blink twice if you're safe. Oh, yeah. No, but I... Uh, but what I proposed to you, like... Pretty soon after that. Pretty quick so, after yeah, that. Yeah, and then I got married. Because, of course, my intentions in my mind which i think you too. planned on it too but yeah, I, I think i was a little further ahead in the relationship than you were well i don't even think it was like you being further ahead it still played back to the like really like me little like awesome okay. andrew Ford from the alaska like you know afraid of rejection like yeah. saying like Paige, will you marry me and all this and... but okay no what i mean by i was further ahead in the relationship yeah like there was moments for absolutely no reason i just thought you were gonna propose like before <laughs> that conversation yeah like you won your first title against that superhero in washington yeah you won the belt i'm like oh he's gonna propose isn't he and i think we've been <laughs> dating for like two months yeah i mean but you were living with me yeah but there was like all these funny moments there was one time your dad you had your dad on, it was coming through the Bluetooth. You were talking to him on the phone and your dad was like, hey, Austin, when do you think you're going to be able to pay me that money back? Yeah. And I was like, oh, you borrowed money from his dad to buy <laughs> to me a me. ring. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought then I was you getting proposed was to too. and I feel like I was always just waiting to be proposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, you uh, did. Which I did. Yeah. And I did have family there. Yep. And, uh, your dad was there. Yeah. We did in Eugene, Oregon. Yep. I got footage of that too. Yeah. I'll put that in. Yeah. It was cute. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the ideal situation for me because, but I mean, there was no right time. I went a total of what, three years having my arm in a cast. Yeah. I'd just broken my arm again. Yeah. So I have a cast on in the thing, but yeah. if we would have waited, we would have been date, you know, dating for three more years before we got engaged. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to, I felt compelled to, uh ask your parents of course oh, this was no. like this was like the worst part of the whole thing and we're going to have my mom on this too but my mom yeah. she's better now but love love you mom notorious panicker yeah anytime the phone rings she panics and thinks that it's inevitably something bad yeah so you called you called my mom and my dad yeah i i started off with i called your mom first mm -hmm. you know and 
and I I never call her mom. So yeah, <laughs> yeah so her mom was like, Which, like, yeah, king, and like what? How many times have you even met her? Was it just the one time that yeah, they came maybe up? Maybe like once or twice. Because my parents lived in a different state. Yeah. So. so I called. I call your mom. Hi, Rachel, and. She's like, Austin, is everything okay? Like, yeah, everything's okay. Uh, I kind of got a question for you. <laughs> and and then she's like even panicking more. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's about Paige and yada, yada, yada. Anyways, I ask her, I'm like, hey, you know, would would you mind if I ask your daughter to marry me? And I'm sure, you know, this is like six months of us dating. It was. Yeah, actually, your parents, your mom was six months. probably like, what the hell like uh yeah i guess so and okay (laughs) yeah okay so so, that one was harder and then you called my dad and then i called your dad and your dad was easy i was like you know hey steve uh my name's austin my name's austin i don't know if you remember me i see uh you know i'm actually just calling to ask uh for your daughter's hand in marriage and and uh your dad was like oh yeah cool cool sounds good (laughs) yeah which leads to okay well which i was there the day you were calling you kept going outside to make these phone calls and i'm like what in the hell is he doing and like i was like what's happening you're like oh something's going on with with our manager i'm like we have the same manager (laughs) what are you talking about so you're making all these secretive phone calls i'm like whatever i don't care and then you know you propose yay everything's awesome yeah um we can you know let's fast forward to us getting married then um so what? we were engaged for six months we were engaged we for married. six months yeah. we did the wedding fast i think trying to time it around our fight schedules trying to time it you fought two weeks after our wedding yeah yeah trying to time everything with everything we had going on in life we just decided to do a really really small wedding um we ended up having to do no kids just because which it was just we had we did make a lot of cuts yeah. and it was my dream to get married on the beach where i grew up where my grandparents were my grandpa got to go to our wedding which was really special because he couldn't travel yeah so i i knew that was the one place in my life that i considered home and that's where i wanted to get married and we had, could only have 80 people at the wedding so i did help tell him all my family like hey sorry none of my cousins can come no kids yeah super small uh incredible wedding it was beautiful and so special ended up raining exactly the moment i was walking down the aisle yeah which is like sprinkling yeah and yeah, that's yeah. good luck on a wedding day yeah and what but this leads back to my father uh what did he say to you and when you he I, gave he, me away yeah when he <laughs> he walks you down the aisle you know and i'm emotional and hmm. you know you look so beautiful and and uh just the whole thing and he hands me he was like well she's your fucking problem now <laughs> at my wedding oh uh, my I, wedding yeah and I, oh good my luck gosh. yeah no, and that's what he said on the phone on oh, the he, phone yes. he said good luck to you yes like, he good told luck. me good luck on the phone and then walking down the aisle this is your problem now yeah no he was like she's your fucking problem now <laughs> Thank, so thanks dad yeah which we're currently not speaking so awkward well He'll come around. Yeah. Everything will work out. Yeah. But gave me away. I'm yours now. Yeah. Your legal property. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. I mean, that was. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I have some questions from fans I want to go through, too. But and I'm sure this will have pieces of it. But we, you know, we'll skip forward. Yeah. We were in Oregon for what? another year or two. Yeah. And then we've, we've been in Florida for like three years now. Yeah. Which is crazy. Which is weird to think. So. Yeah, live here in Florida. We got our dream house. You're currently in our speakeasy turned into a podcast studio. <laughs> yeah. Listening to episode one of a kick-ass love story. Yep. <laughs> I feel like I had more questions for you just about life and our, our love and when we first met. But I think that was it. Yeah, yeah. Just a little backstory. Backstory. Now we're in Florida me. and living, living the dream, I would yeah. say. Yeah. It's been pretty I mean, crazy. A yeah. lot of changes, honestly, since we've moved here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that we'll have a lot of questions about our like careers and our, our fight life and yeah who we are as people. But but yeah, lots of changes since coming to Florida, since being married. That was like a recap of a very small portion of our lives. Yeah. Just the moment we met each other and yeah. fell in love. Yeah. Yeah. Fast so, forward through what, like two or three years? Was that I, the yeah, first three? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Just celebrated our five year 
five year wedding anniversary. Yeah. Um, all right. So on our podcast, we wanted to do segments. Yeah. Uh, we only have a few. We're not going to do them every single time, but this one's going to be called On the Ropes. Okay. We'll be getting questions from fans where they put us on the ropes, right? Oh, okay. So yeah. they're going to be hard hitting questions. They're going to be good questions from fans, from haters. I really wanted to like leave it open ended because yeah. there's only so much that you could talk about on Instagram and only so long of a conversation that you can have. So yeah. for a segment on the ropes. Okay. Here All we right. Go. I have not pre So are these. you going to, you're going to read one and then I'll read one to you or what are we um, doing here? You know, I just posted on Instagram. I probably have like, a few thousand questions oh shit. so obviously okay. we can't get through all of them yeah, do you yeah. want to read them or do you want me to no you read them yeah okay let's hear it. um i will say a lot of them are probably probably for me but yeah sorry <laughs> okay uh oh this is a great one uh hello have you ever farted in the shower and tried blaming <laughs> the dog <laughs> <laughs> how do i answer that <laughs> i don't no. know no <laughs> <laughs> no uh no no, you're you're very open with your yeah, if I'm a, flatulence. Yeah, yeah. If I'm a, um, okay, guys. Ooh, guys wearing thongs. What are my thoughts? What are your thoughts on men wearing thongs? I'm not pro thong underwear for men. Yeah. I would not love if I came home and you were not in one of my thongs. <laughs> <laughs> and I come home and you're just in one of my G-strings. Oh my god! Uh, I would have some serious questions. Yeah, kind of weird. I it, it seems like more of a European thing to me. But yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know when we were in Israel, there was it's more in. You know what? Actually, a lot of our like Brazilian friends and coaches yeah. they do wear the smaller. Sungas. Yeah, the smaller swim shorts. Yeah. Um, uh, which is very common in their culture, but like obviously, yeah, yeah, like speedos. It's just, it's a little bit newer for for us. I think that's what it is. I think it's a sunga. A or sunga? Something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when am I getting back into the wrestling ring? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So obviously I, uh, had my first ever pro wrestling match with AEW, yeah. which I can't wait to share more about. Uh, it was incredible. Yeah. That was, was a fun, such a fun, that was experience. a fun little blip in our, it was getting yeah. to take Dan Lambert's private jet everywhere Yeah, and just live the dream. That's, I will say the coolest thing about moving to Florida is we have got to experience like so much more life than I ever thought. Yeah. We would ever get to, you know, like, of course I thought I would fly. I would, no, I, I did fly on one private jet when I was on dancing with the stars, but being able to do it regularly. It's crazy. It's awesome. Yeah. Like, hello. So when will I do another pro wrestling match soon? I actually just started training with gang growl again here in Florida and I love the AEW, so I definitely see myself doing another match. Yeah. Would yeah. you like that too? Uh, I would. I would like to. I mean, I would eventually like to do it myself, but I enjoy watching you. I think it's fun. And do you? Yeah, I think you do a really good job. Ooh, we do have a lot of questions. This is a very common one. Okay. Uh, the difference between the nerves when you fight yeah. or the nerves you get when you watch me fight. <sighs> They're both, I mean both are so nerve wracking, but mm -hmm. definitely like more of a nervous. I can't, I have no control over the situation when you're fighting and I, it's just not really that fun to go through. No, to be honest. it's not. I think that's kind of the same with me is obviously I get nervous yeah. to fight, but it's more just the, the fear of failure, the yeah. nerves to perform. Yep. You get nerves about your preparation, your training X, Y, and Z, but uh, when you fight, it's like, I have no control and you already know I'm a control freak. Oh, so, so <laughs> if you don't know now, you know, <laughs> now, you know, yeah. uh, and I can't control the outcome. I can't control what happens Yeah. as the fight goes on for you. I definitely, my nerves start fading away and I start feeling more comfortable and less like I'm going to vomit, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I get so nervous. Yeah. It does crazy. make me like, I'm excited for the next chapter in my life where you don't fight anymore i mean i love you fighting and i'm so happy for you to continue for many 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 more years yeah but yeah but i love you but you're excited <laughs> and i don't want you to get punched again. in the yeah. face anymore nah but i do just love it so much so all right oh someone else if have austin ever thought about being in the AEW? oh yeah i mean actually they said would you be in AEW or the pfl oh well 
two different two different obviously things. two different yeah. s- scenarios but you yeah. can talk a little bit about this current situation with bellator and the pfl yeah yeah i mean even myself i don't know all the logistics of everything but the pfl supposedly is buying bellator out or it's a done deal and stuff and and uh you know the pfl is yeah doing a great job and and with every and i don't really know if bellator like dissolves completely and you know we just our contracts carry on over to the pfl i'm not really sure but um but aw would be fun pro wrestling i grew up a pro wrestling fan fan of the undertaker and uh yeah wrestling would be fun i've really enjoyed mm-hmm. like i said the going to the, the and you were good at it the few appearances that you did make in aew you were incredible yeah i did you, i did yeah, a couple little you had to take a bump yeah you were, i took like, a bump you're yeah. you're good um Okay, two more questions okay. that I had thought were, and well, one's for me and one's for you. Okay. We'll jump into the one for me. Why, why, why fake boobs? <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants to know why I got fake boobs. Yeah, let's hear. Um, well, actually, so I forgot my first boob job right before we got married. It was always okay, my dream yeah, to have right. tits in my wedding dress. Yeah. Mm, sue me. Um, <laughs> but uh, never had boobs. Always wanted them. Yeah. Had to buy a pair. I yeah. think that was pretty much it. I always wanted to be a woman. So, yeah. uh, are you a fan of fake boobs? Uh, yeah, I'm, I love them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Great. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, but I mean, if, if you were to ask me like, you know, do you prefer if I have or don't have them on, on just you, then it's like, I mean, doesn't really matter to me that much but i you I better do like love, them they were expensive okay <laughs> yeah. cool um all right a lot of these questions if we want to jump into it uh thoughts on me being on only fans oh this is a good one this is a yeah. good one well i mean obviously you and i talked a lot before before you started it and yes. before we went there and and uh talked a lot amongst each other talked a lot with our family and, mm-hmm. and i think everything. so i called my mom obviously i have a very very close relationship with my mom i ended up calling your mom too yeah and making sure she was okay with it yeah making sure everybody was cool just because of the stigma behind only fans yeah. um obviously when i started i was very it was instagram plus you know what i mean it yeah. was kind of just what i was comfortable with i've definitely evolved <laughs> 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 uh, i've evolved yeah. uh on my only fans journey but i feel like I took baby steps at a rate that I was comfortable with. Yeah. And obviously because we are happily married, it makes it so much easier for me to not, I guess, think of like all the negative. I, I'll always get people to shit talk on me on Instagram. Yeah. It's inevitable. I'm fine with it. Um, At least they're talking about me. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be a problem if nobody was. Um. So I think I've been okay with the negativity because it has impacted our lives in such, such a positive way. Yeah. I mean, we were able to, there's just been a lot of positive things. Of course, the financial side of it is, is really the benefit. Of course. You know, and it's hard to not, it's hard to speak about it without feeling braggy, but you know, we've got our house paid off. We were able to help our family in times of need. And it's like, no question. Like yeah. if, if our family needs help, it's no question. Yep. It's we're going to be there for them because we're in a place where we're financially able to. Yeah. And beyond that, I think it's given me the freedom, you know, obviously right now we're, we're just able to live the life that we want and yep. it's created just financial freedom for us. I don't have to do things that I don't necessarily want to do anymore. I'm not traveling as much as I used to. There was a point in my life doing appearances or autograph signings, just trying to say yes to every single possible thing. Yeah. So I could continue to capitalize on just the, the offers that I had coming in. And so now we're able to say no to these, uh, experiences, you know what I mean? Or not experiences, just these obligations. And we can just live our day-to-day lives feeling a little bit more comfortable. And I have a lot of fun. Honestly, I have a lot of fun. I love doing photo shoots. I love feeling sexy. Yeah. Uh, before I was a professional fighter, I was a dancer. It's not like I'm unfamiliar with like modeling or being sexy. And, uh, I've definitely evolved. It's definitely a little bit more than (laughs) Instagram plus. Maybe I've made a few appearances. You have made a few appearances. (laughs) Everyone got to see why I really fell in love with you. Oh boy. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyways, anyways. Anyways, okay. We're going to leave. Make sure you comment in the comment section below questions you have about OnlyFans that are more specific. Yeah. We'll definitely try to answer those on here. Um, we'll jump ship because I feel like OnlyFans could be a whole oh my segment gosh, yeah. in itself. But I found another hilarious question okay, for cool. you yeah, let's about me. Paige, how do you take such good care of your teeth? <laughs> you have a beautiful oh, smile. Oh, oh, geez. Yeah. I, well, you do, though. I've Thank always... You. you have, like, the perfect teeth. Do you want to spill my, uh, my teeth regimen? She does not brush her teeth as often as... She he probably should, right? <laughs> Here's the thing. You, you're a once a day. I need to take a sip. Okay. You're a once a day. I'm brusher. a one, once a day, once every other day. Whenever I feel like I need to brush my teeth, I brush them. It's typically once every other day. Yeah. Um, I'm not ashamed of that. Yeah. Because when I do brush my teeth, I brush for like 15 minutes. So it so, makes up for it. Okay. And two, when I go to the dentist, which I, I just went to the dentist like yeah. six months ago like a year ago maybe yeah. <laughs> and the dentist said my teeth were impeccable yeah so whatever i'm doing i'm doing it right this is true yeah and you uh yeah i mean can't really i for me i just you must not hate it that much we share a toothbrush well this is true yeah no i don't hate it at all yeah i just prefer i prefer to brush my teeth a little more but <clears throat> The question yeah. was, Paige, how do you? But I'm pro teeth? it's probably because I'm more of a mouth breather. I've got a deviated <laughs> septum, and so my teeth feel like hairier more often. I hate that term. <laughs> I hate it. That's so what much. our family would say when your teeth. They. Our I think teeth that is feel, your teeth feel hairy. Teeth feel hairy. I do think that's a very common saying. Is it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we share a toothbrush. Okay, so great teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fabulous teeth by me. Awesome. Um, let's see. Asking Austin. Oh, no. Not going to ask that. Really? Nope. It's that bad. Huh? If I could have one night with Paige by oh. himself. I figure the answer is no, right? Yes, no. Okay. So, sorry, buddy. Sorry. So, no. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's do a few more questions. I'm going to rapid fire. Okay. I'm just going to read them. Not yeah. going to vet them. Uh, what's your favorite egg meal? Ooh, my favorite egg meal. Honestly, just the, oh, fuck. <laughs> you love eggs though. Yeah. Like you if love I, eggs. My favorite favorite is if I really take the time and like really scramble them right. And I put a little milk in or like okay. whole milk. I scramble them up. I stop them before I think that they're done because that's the key to, uh, scrambling the perfect egg. You take so, your eggs very seriously. Eggs. Yeah. I don't like eggs. Yeah, you're not an egg fan. Don't like eggs. So, okay. so it, um, let's see. Favorite fight that you ever saw live? Favorite fight I've ever seen live. Uh, Tiago Alves yes. versus Yuli Diaz. BKFC. BKFC. If you have not seen that fight, epic, legendary. Unbelievable. Two warriors absolutely epic fight that is the best fight i have ever seen live bare knuckle bare knuckle boxing is my favorite combat sport it's my favorite combat yeah. sport and i i've had two fights in in bare knuckle boxing and uh i'm supposed to have another one i want to have another one um bare knuckle boxing is brutal yes and uh, that's a whole episode we could talk about bkfc and our thoughts on having you competing in bare knuckle boxing the experience about me fighting in bare knuckle boxing it was absolutely yeah absolutely insane but that is the best fight i've ever seen live yes i agree okay um, I'm, I'm trying to find one for you yeah. i got a good one i saw in there just like long injuries or like bad injuries that you've had from fighting yeah of course we both have our share of injuries the worst one i have had i think everybody should know about but if they don't if you're new here uh why i had my cast on when we got proposed or when yeah. we got engaged uh i shattered my forearm fired it <laughs> Farting. <laughs> Farting. <laughs> I shattered my forearm. That's so funny. Fighting. Yes. Jessica Rose Clark. I did a spinning back fist. And I shattered my forearm on her forehead. And uh, it required surgery. The first surgery failed. So I had to, ha had to have a second one. I then broke my arm two more times training and had to have surgery uh, twice more, and I have a scar from my elbow to my wrist. Um, that was one of the reasons that I actually chose to go to 
bare knuckle boxing is the risk of me re-breaking my arm was significantly lower yeah because every time i broke my arm training i was throwing an elbow getting kicked in the arm getting kneed in the arm so yeah that will always stay with me yeah my, yeah, my yeah. stupid little arm your gosh dang arms uh, i know i'm trying to find a good uh, a good question i've seen the same one come up twice hit me with it <laughs> Not, not, <laughs> not asking, PG? not asking, but I've seen it come up twice. Ask it, ask it, ask it, ask it, can't, ask can't. it, can't. I, I can't ask that one. I'll yeah. ask it. I'm not, I'm not shy. Yeah. Oh gosh. Does it have to do with the butt? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you right now the answer is yes. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Um, gosh, <laughs> gosh, where are we at? Oh, your favorite random hobby. What's your favorite <laughs> random hobby? I know what yours is. Yeah. You have two. Yeah. Yours is Call of Duty, which yeah. I'm absolutely astounded that I got you to sit down here and do the podcast with me because why? Today's release day. As yes. we are filming this, today's release day, the new multiplayer. And you're missing it. And I'm missing. You're not missing it. You got up first thing it. this morning and played with your brother. No, not first thing. First thing this morning, I, I had a perfect morning. I got up. I drank my sodium solution. <laughs> I red light therapied my nuts <laughs> in, in the bathroom. Did That's red true. Light I woke up this morning and there's just this alien glow coming out of the bathroom. And I walk in, he's just straddling a <laughs> red light therapy machine. Not straddling, but yeah. <laughs> straddling. Uh, we then we went we, we went for a walk where you earthed to you that means you walked barefoot i did my push-ups my walking mm -hmm. i earthed tell everybody why you're so much better than everybody else yeah and then and then right when we got back then we hit a run too so yep and then i drank another sodium solution and then i gamed then you gamed yeah. back to your hobbies which I will say that was a very productive morning. That was. Yeah. We have a little bit different mornings. Yeah. I wake up, I chug a Red Bull and smoke a joint. <laughs> <laughs> you red light your balls. <laughs> okay, I'm just but, kidding. I didn't do that this morning. I did go yeah, for a run. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. But you know what? Okay, Yo my, my two hobbies. Oh, my yeah, your two, two hobbies. hobbies. Sorry. Uh, Call of Duty, football cards. Football cards. Little You're obsessed with football cards. cards. You have a whatnot show. Yeah. We'll plug it. Uh, if you want to go buy some of his football, uh, uh, I do join him on the what not shows. You and, you know you and have, I have fun a lot too. of fun. You oh, have fun too. I hate that I have fun opening football cards with you, but I do. It is it's fun. And I'll tell you right now, how many hobbies do I have? <laughs> well, you're you really got into planting stuff right. lately. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't have a hobby. Yeah, I but wait, you I, really don't. I really don't. Yeah. I wake up and I pretty much get on my computer I and work and work work all day. Yep, all day every day. And stress, stress and, and work. work and stress and, stress. and work yeah. and stress and work and stress and work. No, your your hobby's Dennis. You love. Dennis. I love my dog so yeah. much. He was I, supposed to be I in love, here, but he was being naughty. He's being bad. Yeah. I do enjoy a drinky. Yeah. yeah. On yeah, you're a, a big, nightcap you're big or a tequila. You're a big tequila. You're a big. Uh... Ooh, shout out to Ten Barrel Brewing Company. They don't sponsor me. Um, they're just delicious. Yeah, and they're from Oregon. I yeah, you these. do love those. Your sister got me on these. Actually, they make the cucumber crush or cucumber sours. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, gosh, okay, so that's our so hobbies we've established. Hobbies we've you don't established. Really have... I don't have a hobby. Yeah, my hobby is you. Where? Yeah. Yeah, ow, I was ow. interesting. It. Okay, well, I lost the... Lost the questions. It yeah, was a screen lost. recording. Yeah. That's okay. I think this was a this was a successful first episode. Yeah. I'm happy. I am too. We don't yeah. need to drag it on. Um, Guys, we're going to keep doing questions for... Uh, ooh, I see my arm just cracked. Um, We're going to keep doing podcasts. This was... I think this was great. Oh, I, love I think it. this was fun. Love successful. Time with you and... I love spending time with you. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, our first first episode. First episode, I know. Give a little backstory to those who maybe not be familiar with. Familiar with, with us. us. We'll continue yeah. on. Our episodes will continue to talk about us, our love story. Um, also, super important. Next episode, we will be doing a segment called Below the Belt. Yes. We will be reffing your fights at home. And we will decide who is punching below the belt. So, relationship fights. 
we'll share some of our completely anonymous yeah completely completely anonymous write in the fights that you're having with your couple your significant other your best friend we will judge who's punching them below the belt who is in the wrong uh we'll share i think we should share one of our worst fight stories yeah i have it in my head and it's really funny oh shit okay it has to do with the toilet With the toilet. I'm not giving any sneak peeks. You got to tune in next week. I'm going to surprise you too. It's one of the worst fights we've ever had. It's got to do with the toilet. Tune oh, in. shit. I do remember. Okay. Yeah. This <laughs> right, is a good one. Write in your question or write in your stories. Who's punching below the belt? We will use your stories and oh my we, will, gosh. we will judge your fights. <laughs> I cannot believe that. That was one of our yes. worst fights. Anyways. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> this is a kick ass love story. Paige Van Zant. Awesome Vander Ford. Paige Vander Ford. Yeah. Um, Ford. Subscribe. Tune in. I hope you guys like this. If not, suck it. We're going to keep doing it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. We're out. Out. We're out. <laughs>